Hi, I am uh, Professor Amitabh Banerjee. I have been an epidemiologist in the armed forces and since the past 19 years after leaving the armed forces, I am working as a professor in a medical school. And as I had finished uh, the book reading of Pandemic Third Eye, which contained a few of my columns, I have decided to update it further on my YouTube channel on my writings on COVID-19 in the form of other columns which are not contained in this book and which have come in number of outlets. So today I'll be discussing one such column which is of importance to everyone and which is uh, of uh, increasingly it is becoming a debate that is uh, COVID-19. The title of the column is self-explanatory. COVID-19, what explains the sudden death? Uh, this column was published in National Herald on 23rd December 2022, more than one and a half years ago, when uh, we noticed, um, I and Professor Bhaskaran from uh, IIT Mumbai, a data analyst, we uh, studied the data and particularly Professor uh, Bhaskaran studied large data sets from a number of uh, European countries and uh, they, we found a trend that there is a rise in deaths in young people which are sudden. And we have presented in this column, we have presented some data for people to think over it and for the policymakers and scientists to investigate further. And we have summarized the theme of this column in the words, while there is no cause for panic, we did not want to create unnecessary panic also. While there is no cause for panic, reports of otherwise healthy people suddenly collapsing and dying do need to be investigated if there is any correlation with the vaccine, with the COVID, or with any other cause, or with the say, natural infection, or because uh, of uh, delayed treatment or whatever. So we have uh, tried to keep a very objective and detached view. And uh, we are just I will read the main points. The global rollout of mass vaccinations against COVID-19 complicated matters. Once the vaccines were given emergency use authorization, Country after country went berserk, opting for mass vaccination by coercion, if not by mandates. Debate around vaccines got polarized by the time vaccines developed, the infection had, and by the time, particularly in our country and high density countries, by the time the vaccines got developed, the infection had infected a large number in the densely populated countries of Asia and Africa. Being younger, younger and leaner, many recovered and non in normal course were not eligible for vaccination against all, according to all principles of immunology and epidemiology, they were not uh, prime candidates for vaccination. However, desperation was high and consensus was to vaccinate all. Subsequently, studies showed that natural immunity is 13 times more robust than vaccine-induced immunity. Studies from Israel, studies from Cleveland Clinic and it was earlier also it was known, nothing new about it. These studies should have acted as speed, speed breakers to mass vaccination. These studies itself uh, should have, they did not. We should grant the policymakers the benefit of doubt. Precautionary principle demands one should err on the side of safety. Agree, benefit of doubt can be given. If, however, after more than an year into the mass vaccination, we are at the crossroads. There are some signals which should alert policymakers. This we, column we have written almost uh, two years ago, one and a half years ago. We have alerted the policymakers with uh, data in this column. There are reports of sudden deaths in previously healthy people, including the teenagers. We vaccinated millions with limited resources for monitoring of adverse events, particularly in our country. Even in the developed country, less than 10% adverse events get reported. And in our country, it is less than 1%. We don't have a proper system of monitoring adverse events. It is likely that some unfortunate events may be purely coincidental. 
but such incidences to demand a precautionary principle approach that is to err on the side of safety recent estimates of lethality of the virus should be reassuring a meta analysis across 38 countries undertaken by investigators from stanford university found that fatality from natural infection is 0.00003% till age of 19 years and around 0.03 to 0.07 up to the age of 69 years. This data was available in the past six months of the pandemic, that up to 69 years in a healthy person, the mortality must be one of the lowest among communicable diseases. With such low rates, we should pause vaccination and investigate thoroughly. Alarmed at the frequent media reports of sudden deaths, the Delhi Commission for Women have asked for an inquiry by the government. According to survey by local circles, these are some of the informal groups because the uh, scientists with, I don't know what type of scientists with some stakes of, they were reluctant to investigate. Firstly, there was a denial, but uh, there were some local circles, like according to a survey by local circles, a social community platform, 51% citizens said they know one or more persons who have had heart attacks strokes, sudden cancers, neurological disorders in the recent past. One of those who experienced such events, out, out of those who experienced such events, a 62 respondents were double vaccinated, 11% had received a single dose and 8% were unvaccinated. So those who had faced these sudden events like deaths, cancers, strokes, heart attacks, 62% of them happened to be vaccinated and only and 8% were unvaccinated. So, of course, this is an informal way, but we do require proper study. Science demands a detached view, and scientists should not jump to conclusion. One of the requirements for this is discerning any unusual patterns at the population level, large level. This too indicates cause for concern. The increase in certain deaths has been since early 2021. There was a six-fold increase in heart attacks in Mumbai. This data was uh, compiled by Professor Raman from IIT Mumbai, from the hospital admissions in Mumbai. So there was a six-fold increase in heart attacks since 2021. These are signals. These are not proof. The association doesn't mean causation, but they require investigation. Edward Dowd, in his book, Cause Unknown, the Epidemic of Sudden Deaths, in 2021 and 2022 reports a 84% rise in sudden deaths in the age group 24 to 44 years in USA coinciding, coinciding with mass vaccine mandates which was corroborated by study from insurance claims. Two different sources of data from all cause mortality. So there was a 84% rise in deaths among the young, 25 to 44 working class when the vaccine was mandated for this working class. And this was uh, triangulated with the data from insurance claims. So this is a pretty strong signal. The pattern of excess death is global from this weekend. Here we take a close look at two countries from where open data is available, England and Wales and Australia. The figure below shows the total deaths in England and Wales. I will try to show you the figures. Uh, from all causes, in the first 47 weeks until uh, November, end of November, this is for 2022, of each year since 2015, we can see that the year 2020 saw an increase in about 13% in overall mortality over the average of the prior five years. What is striking also is that even in 2022, there is significant excess mortality of 8% over the 2015 and 19 average. I just try to show you the figure. You have started screen share. Yeah, if you see, this is the data from England and Wales. These are the five blue color is the prior to the vaccine rollout. And after the vaccine rollout in 2021, there is a increase of uh, say number of deaths uh, percentage of deaths in 2021 and in 2022 also this 2022 figure is not complete so this is a matter of concern and similarly uh, particularly more concerning is the increase among the young people i think it is uh, this is among the young people 
Yeah, this is the this is the rise. This is the overall rise. You see, uh, for previous five years, three, four, five, 2019, and after the vaccine rollout in 2020, there is a rise in deaths, and this 2022 data is not complete. So there is our rise, and this is the overall all across all age groups, England and Wales. This is the population level data, and this is what is more concerning is this is in the uh, age group 15 to 44 years. So in this age group, we don't expect a rise. So here also 2021 and 22, there is a rise of sudden deaths in young people. So this is a matter of concern when we see the last data. Unfortunately, we our data is not such a large country which are, uh, we are leading in IT and digital platform. Had we such data, we would have uh, actually it would have been illustrative for the whole world with such data dividend we have got. But uh, it appears that nobody seems to be interested to investigate. Then uh, the figure, I have shown you the figures, uh, the excess deaths after the vaccine rollout at population level. And then uh, there is a data from Australia is also very interesting. The case of Australia is even more stark as the country followed a zero COVID policy for a long time with strict lockdowns as well as coercion and mandates for COVID-19 vaccines. There was hardly any COVID because nobody was allowed to go to Australia. Even that tennis player Nojavec was not allowed to enter. So they controlled their COVID. There were no natural infection. But after the vaccine rollout, there was an increase in deaths in the young people. By the start of 2022, it had vaccinated the majority of its population and even boosters were available. The baseline average deaths in the first eight months of the year is just uh, just uh, less than around 1 lakh, while the total deaths in the first eight months of 2022 had been 1.29 lakhs. This represents a 17% increase. Before the vaccination and after the vaccination, there was a 17% increase in deaths in Australia, whereas Australia did not have uh, natural infection because of the strict controls. Very little natural infection. Right? Yeah. Also saying, no, that is uh, most deaths may be due to the virus also. It you know, causes long COVID and all that. But Australia is a good country. The excess has been only after vaccination. And this represents a 17.2% increase above baseline, even higher than the excess deaths caused by COVID-19 COVID in 2020 in England and Wales. There are two possible causes for this high excess mortality worldwide. First, there could be the prolonged effects of harsh lockdown. That could be one. After all, lockdowns have directly increased diabetes, obesity, starvation, poverty, joblessness, vitamin D deficiency, propensity for cancer, etc. A second cause could be the excessive use of COVID-19 vaccines. Even among the already COVID recovered and even among the not at risk population without adequate safety data. The time correlation of heart ailments with the COVID-19 jab rollout is unmistakable in worldwide data sets. While correlation does not mean causation, it certainly is a red flag which must be probed ob objectively. We did not in this column, we just uh, gave the signal, red signal to investigate. We did not jump to any conclusion. The, and we suggested the way forward, how to investigate it. The way forward would be to halt mass vaccination in those who have recovered from natural infection. We could have kept them as a control group and follow them forward to monitor any adverse present being attributed to long COVID. The second group in this study can be those who never had encountered the virus but have taken the vaccine. Because now everything was on the digital platform, RT-PCR positive, you could identify people who have never had the year but taken the vaccine and people who have not taken the vaccine but had the natural infection from the both these groups can be followed up in time to ascertain short term as well as long term effects and provide hard evidence whether the vaccine or the natural infection is responsible for the sudden deaths anything short of this will mask the truth forever this was a concern and subsequently we were also concerned about uh, the ICMR, it was announced that ICMR will investigate the sudden deaths and it did investigate. It published its studies in Indian Journal of Medical Research on sudden deaths. If can, and uh, But uh, when we saw the study, 
uh, I, we found a lot of uh, shortcomings in the study. It appeared as if the idea was just to mask any effect, if any, because uh, in any study, there is a comparison group. And the, in the ICMR study, they did a case control study, which is not a very robust study for this type of studies because they took the people who had uh, experienced sudden death and then they took controls from the neighborhood only. And they saw ki who had, they found no difference in the vaccination status of those who died and those who survived. There will be no difference because you have already implemented mass vaccination. So if you are vaccinated, then your neighbor is also likely to be vaccinated. If you assemble such groups, where is the control group uh, actually? If a thing is so uh, widely distributed, you won't be able. So the better would have been to uh, take a... And there were other shortcomings in the study also. There was a, such a multi-century study and such a large number of uh, authors. There were more than 100 authors and it was such a sloppy study. There was some data missing. And uh, both uh, I and uh, Professor Raman had written to the journal or observations on the shortcomings of the study. And the journal had been, Indian Journal of Medical Research, had been very kind to publish our observations also. Uh, both our observations have been published and the original study have been published. I will be sharing the link in my this uh, YouTube channel in this presentation. I will be sharing the link of the National Herald article. I will be sharing the link of the Indian Journal of Medical Research, which gave the vaccine a clean sheet and observations on that study, which were, we found serious limitations. So best way to identify this would have been to retrieve digitally those who are vaccinated and those who are not vaccinated and follow them forward in time. Anything sort of this is uh, very, very poor science, I would say, particularly for vaccines which are on uh, uh, emergency use authorization. So thank you uh, for today. Thank you so much.